and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today we are in my sewing corner. I am kicking off a sewing project. It is spring. Spring has sprung, is in full bloom. I'm feeling very like lively, I feel like. I just got back from a trip to New York and I feel kind of re-inspired to sew. So today we are venturing into the very late 50s. This pattern is from 1959 and it features like a button down tie or belt thing. I will be doing the full skirt version, but I would love to do the belt buckle if I have the right one in my collection. However, it says that we need a three inch belt buckle, which is kind of wildly large. And I don't think I have one just sitting in my collection and I'll peruse the internet, but I don't think I want to wait till I have one in. So this is kind of almost like a faux wrap situation. This is a Simplicity 3034. And the description is a Mrs. Dress with two skirts, which I assume is the large skirt and then the pencil skirt, which is obviously not what I'll be doing. So this dress has a collar set in sleeves and a front button closing. Shaped half belts are sewn into side seams and fastened in front. Version one, which is the version I'll be doing, is a full skirt that is softly pleated. And then the belts are tied into a knot at the center front. So that is the pattern. I'm pretty pumped about that. And then also equally pumped, we are are finally reaching into my fabric stash. This is a beautiful fabric from Italy that I picked up when I was in Rome last, which was a few years ago. It is this beautiful watercolor pear print that I picked up because I had a watercolor fruit dress that unfortunately didn't fit me anymore, so I had to de-stash it. And now I am kind of recreating that with this, even though this is a very different look than that dress. I was so sad when I had to get rid of that dress. That is why I picked this guy up. <laughs> Honestly, this should be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna have to add a half half inch to the side seams to get this to be my size. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I would like to add pockets ideally. Any, any other alterations? Oh, I'll have to double check that the sleeves are my correct size. They just like apparently didn't have much arm girth in the 50s. I usually I have to size those up, which is totally fine. The best part about sewing is that you can actually make things that fit you. You don't have to fit the pattern, the pattern fits you. So. Let's go ahead and hop into it. First step, as always, is to cut out all my pieces. And in this case, since there are pleats, there is plenty to mark, especially on the skirts. Usually I get a nice break from marking things, but not this time. Because this pattern is a size 12, which is a little bit too small for me, I did cut an extra half inch on the side of the skirt, the side of the bust, and then also the sleeve. Luckily, I didn't have to make the sleeves any wider because they fit my bicep when I checked those measurements, so that was great. I at least avoided having to do a slash and spread alteration on the pattern. As always, right here is a reminder that I do have both a Ko-fi and a Patreon where you can sign up for monthly memberships to support my channel financially. Please, please, please do not do this if you're not in the financial position to do so. I'm doing okay. I just like to leave it as an option for people who wanna support my work and you will get access to early video releases and polls. I did need some interfacing for this. The instructions, instead of suggesting to cut matching facing pieces, direct me to do a two inch by, I think it was 17 inches, strips that will go in each side where the buttons are to help reinforce all that. And I've been enjoying getting all of my interfacing put on at the beginning of a project because I find this part pretty tedious and I don't like doing it multiple times. So I added the interfacing to the collar as well as to where the button holes need reinforcement. Once that's done, I am marking my darts before then pinning them. And after sewing them, I am tying them off. This is just my preferred method. There are lots of ways to do darts. I like to tie them off at the ends. And then before I leave my sewing machine to iron those darts, I am folding over on the facing by a quarter inch. So that way that edge will be nice and finished when it is time to eventually sew that down. These darts are deep enough that the instructions did tell me to cut into them, which is not usually something I love doing, but I've gotten used to following these instructions and have learned to trust my sewing enough to be okay cutting darts, but it will always be something that makes me a little nervous. Once those are cut, I'm of course pressing them properly. And then since I added a back zip up the back of the dress, I'm quickly sewing that in with basting stitches because I will eventually have to unpick this to put in the zipper. I then sewed around the side ties. These are kind of like if you were to make a belt piece where you have to go all the way to the edge and then back around and flip it inside out and stuff. 
So here I am sewing those initial stitches that go to the point. While sewing, I've had a little gremlin settle into my ironing board, so I have to kick her off, but not before some big stretches and yawns. She did not want to go. She fought me a little, but we did get her off the ironing board. And once our varmin has been removed, I am cutting into the ties uh, where the curves are to make sure I can press this really nice and evenly. And then I am turning it inside out and giving it a good old press. And these are looking absolutely beautiful. Anytime I do ties like this or anything kind of weird shaped, it always makes me a little nervous, but I feel very pleased with how these were able to turn out in the end. And now I'm pinning the ties where the like notches and things all match. These kind of go in almost like how you would a back tie ribbon. Actually, they have you specifically like pin them pointing to the back. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way you pin it. I just thought that was interesting. But yeah, this really isn't that different than if you were going to add a waist tie to any dress. Spooky has decided to provide some pretty strict supervision. And here I'm just sewing those shoulder seams and side seams that you saw me pin last. Does anyone else's cat love to sit on top of their sewing machine? I think it's very funny that Spooky does. And so I'm curious if anyone else has a cat that does this behavior. She usually doesn't like to be up there when I'm sewing on it. So this was interesting, but of course I will never mind having Spooky near me. And now I am pinning the collar pieces together because of the back zip, the collar is broken into two two pieces. So I have, you know, two pieces of collar to sew. It really isn't ideal, I think, necessarily to have a back zip with a collar, but it's so important for how I get in and out of a dress for me to have a back zipper that even though it's not maybe the ideal look with a collar, I still try and do it. And then my next step is to ease the collar in here. I'm matching all the notches and everything. And then I talked about in my last video how it feels like I always have little pleats around my collars and somebody suggested sewing it with a needle and thread with large basting stitches before actually putting it under the machine to help it stop shifting. So that is what I did here. And then I am stitching all of those layers together on my machine. And then I pulled out that basting stitch and now I am cutting all of my notches notches before then under stitching to make sure everything lays and folds over as planned. And then it is at this point that I get to put in my label. This is my first time using my new labels and they're oh so cute. So I was pretty excited and it's nice to have something a little smaller to sew in. And then after picking my buttons, it is time to stitch in those buttonholes. And then for the sleeves, this is actually a little bit different than most sleeves I do. They actually have you sew in the bias tape first or the bias binding, which is going to give you that clean edge on the inside, which is what I'm doing here. I'm just using some plain white bias binding. And I do want to know I am under stitching that bias binding. I again, just think it makes such a difference when it comes to having it roll up and press correctly and stay pressed correctly. And then here I am trimming some seams and pressing everything so that way when I do eventually hem this, once I have installed it, it will really just fit up and like hem very, very nicely. It's easier to do this while flat than when I am working with a tiny little circle. After that, I am putting in the basting stitches to the sleeve head. And now I'm finally putting in that stitch line to close the sleeve. With all that done, it is time for me to ease the sleeve into the sleeve head. This was pretty straightforward. I could have probably been a little bit more patient and eased it in a little bit nicer, but I have never been bothered by having little tiny pleats in my sleeves. So I just decide to live with that as opposed to getting the perfect ease. And then once my sleeves are sewed in, I am just doing the hand stitching on those sleeve hems. That is all I'm doing for today. Tomorrow, I will turn my attention to the skirt. After a good night's sleep, I remembered I never cut out pockets. So I'm first layering up my fabric four times to get four pieces and using my homemade pattern pocket piece to cut out my pockets. I feel like I have generally not valued having pockets in my dresses, but if the dress is right and the fabric's sturdy enough, I do like to add a pocket these days. Once the pockets are cut, I then look at where they should sit on the skirt and I cut marks there to make sure I will know exactly where to place the pockets on each side of the skirt. 
From here, my first step is to sew up the middle of the skirt, both the front middle and the back middle. The back middle, I do have pins in place, so I know where to baste, and then the zipper stops, so then I'll go back into some normal stitching. And I've not yet shown how I'm finishing my seams. I am going to be pinking. This is a nice thick cotton, so it's perfect for that. So I have pinked these, and now I'm pressing them open. And every decade of instructions does pockets a little different. I prefer what they do in the 70s, which they first sew in the pockets just where the pockets go at 3 8 inch in a 5 8 seam allowance if that makes sense it should in a second and then with those sewed I now seam them open and before I enter my next step, I'm actually going to be pleating. I decided to pleat these while they're each on their individual because it's easier for me to flip back and forth as opposed to sewing the front and the back together and then pleating, especially since the pleats don't go over any of the seams. Technically, this pattern does ask for soft pleats, which means you're not supposed to iron at all. However, I am incapable of doing pleats without ironing, so I will never be able to do a truly soft pleat. And also, if I'm going to take the time to pleat, they are not going to be soft. They are going to be hard and obvious. And with the pleats basted in, I am now pinning the front and the back of the skirt together, pinning around the pockets, and all that fun stuff. I then used a five inch seam allowance to sew down the side of the skirt and around the pocket and then further down the side of the skirt. And then after that, I like to finish my pocket seams with zigzag. I could pink these like everything else, but I just like the extra sturdiness of a zigzag stitch in this situation. Plus I don't need to press them open, so a zigzag stitch is the perfect finish. And now I'm pinking my side seams. And then I will be pressing the pockets in place. You see me kind of fiddling here, but basically you can't see the seams of the pocket because again, they were sewn in at that 3 8 inch seam allowance within a 5 8 seam allowance. So the stitches for the pockets is hidden inside of the regular skirts seam allowance. Hopefully that made sense. I do not feel like I showed this the clearest I could for you. And now I get the joy of checking my pleating math and I am pinning the bodice and the skirt together. I was off by about a quarter inch. So I just pulled out the last pleat that was closest to the pocket and re adjusted it so that way the skirt and the top would perfectly sew together. One day I'll get pleats perfect, but today is not that day. And then after sewing them together, I will be using a bias binding to finish out the waistband. I like to give my waistband a little bit more security than just doing a pinked seam. I like having the additional two lines of stitching that a bias binding gives me. And here I am now pulling out the basting stitches from the pleats since they are well and secured in the waistband of the dress. And now it's time to stick in the zipper, which is always very exciting because it means I can finally try this on. Yes, I know I should try things on before I put in the zipper, but I just like don't feel like you can get a good fit until you put in the zipper. And let's be honest, by the time you are trying things on without the zipper in, it's already equally as a pain to fix things as if you have a zipper in, so. After trying the dress on, I realized I would need to hem it almost five inches for it to sit exactly where I want. So I am going to cut off two and a half inches and then hem it two inches. And that'll give me a little wiggle room with the fact I'll do a quarter inch turn up in there. Here I am putting in that quarter inch turn hem. And then after that, I am going to put in basting stitches so I can ease the hem in. So here I am turning up that hem by two inches and I am pulling those gathering threads that I put in so that way it is eased nicely into the skirt. Now it's time to get deep into the hand sewing, which is one of my favorite parts. So here I am stitching the hem with a nearly invisible stitch. Here I am, I've already sewed in the buttons, I forgot to take footage of me doing so. So here what I'm showing you is I've started to sew an extra button into either the hem of a skirt or like the back of the skirt, wherever it's not going to be annoying, just so I don't have to actually hunt these buttons down in my stash later if a button does fall off. So that's been kind of what I've been doing to make sure I know where my spare buttons are. And with us being close to done, I am putting on my fray check before slicing up those beautiful buttonholes. And now we will hop into the reveal.
All right, you've seen the reveal. I adore this dress. It's so bright and colorful, and I feel like it's maybe more summer than spring, but that is neither here nor there. However, like usual, we are gonna hop into a cost breakdown before popping over into my final thoughts on this project and wrap up. Got my spreadsheet, and this time I did my research ahead of time. Look at me go. So as far as fabric, I had to estimate a little bit because I did buy this in Italy a few years ago before I was fully tracking my costs, and this was about $48, I guessed, on fabric because I know I spent like about $12 a yard on it or a meter or whatever. That's like my rough guesstimate essentially. I used four-ish yards. And then as far as notions, I spent $8.99. These notions include the zipper, the buttons, the binding tape, is that what it's called? Bias binding that I used. And then interfacing, thread, all that good stuff. And then this pattern was super cheap. I have no idea where I picked it up, but it was only $4.40. So that brings us to a supply total of $61.39. Actually feels like a pretty good price for a dress that is this high quality and unique and special. I'm more than happy to have spent that on this. I think it is well worth it. As far as the labor, I spent one and a half hours cutting this out. I feel like that seems slow and I was maybe moving slower or something because yeah woof. The sewing took six hours and 25 minutes and then I hand sewed on this guy for about an hour. I usually prefer to hand sew a little bit more so that's kind of a bummer but of course I ended up with a beautiful result so it's fine and we got a lower labor cost than usual because I only spent eight hours and 45 minutes on this. I feel like a lot of my projects have been well above this amount of time so I think it is ultimately not a bad thing that it took this much time. However, now we talk about labor. So I'm gonna multiply that eight hours and 45 minutes by $35.39, which is approximately the cost of living in Seattle. I still need to adjust for an inflation even more, but I believe this comes out to around 70K a year, which is honestly, yeah, definitely out of date. Probably for you to live without living paycheck to paycheck in Seattle, my bet is you need to be up at about 75 to 80K now because of how expensive rent and food and all of that has gotten here. So yeah, I need to make that adjustment. But once you multiply those together, it is $309.66 of labor costs. So the grand total of like me making this garment, essentially, if I was to pay myself a living wage, no profit, no overhead, nothing like that, is $371.05 which that does feel pretty darn high, not gonna lie. Of course, I didn't actually spend that money, but that the time I take to do these, one of the other reasons I put like a labor cost on it is if I'm doing freelance design work, I get paid for that usually. I do some pro bono, but mostly I get paid for it. So the hours I spend sewing are hours I'm not making other money. So I think it's really important to account for time. And if you're somebody who works long hours or multiple jobs, or I just, I feel like none of us have tons of free time. So I think it's just really important to calculate time into your cost of a garment, especially when you talk about to people who, I've never had somebody really ask me to sew for them for free because I'm too aggro for that. People know not to ask me for things like that. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand how much time you're investing in sewing something for them. You like wouldn't ask them to do their job for free or to like, I don't know, do yard work for eight hours for you. Like that would be kind of weird. I have a bargaining system actually for people who do want me to do mending for them, but it means that they do about equal amount of service for me of something I can't do or don't want to do, you know, because they don't want to learn to mend. Or my rule is I will mend their thing, but I will make them learn how to mend it while I mend it. So I teach them how to mend it essentially. And then my rule is they can't come back to me twice for the same mend or the same fix. Uh, so yeah, that's just kind of some of my thoughts on like sewing and like sewing for other people. Of course, I have sewn things for people without them ever asking because it's fun for me. But uh, I generally bristle when people want me to like hem their pants for them because that is not fun. That was your little random off track for today, but curving back around, I did my research ahead of time. I found one 
really, really fast fashion brand dress that was pretty close to this. That was $20.99. I do wanna know it's a poly cotton blend and you can just generally guess by this price that it wasn't fit properly on the model. So like if you were to buy this, it likely wouldn't fit you great and was likely touched by some sort of forced labor. And both of those are probably things you don't really want in your closet. I'm big on energy and I just feel like the energy of something sewn under that condition is like not something you want in your house. And then I found two like mid-tier brands, I would call them, who had similar dresses. One was out of cotton for $89. And I just wanna remind you, I paid $61. So then the other was $99 and this was a poly viscose blend, more poly than viscose. Mine was 100% cotton and probably higher quality than both of these mid-range and it was about $30 cheaper. So when we talk about sewing saving you money, it's not that, like if you, by low quality fast fashion, sewing is not going to save you money. But if you're looking for like kind of more special or designer pieces or high quality pieces, this does save you money. And then going into kind of the more ethical brands range, I found two ethical brands with similar dresses. And when I'm talking similar, I looked at, do they have a button up and a collar? Because that is obviously a similar construction to this. And then, which I'm pointing to the thing that I'm wearing. The thing I made had a collar too. And then does it have the ties and some sort of pleat I couldn't find the pleating in all cases, but these are all things that like add price to something to that like to make it because it's additional steps. So the two ethical brands I found, there was one for about $289 and one for $157. It's always weird because I feel like we frame sewing as being expensive, but when you look at the quality of what you can buy in a store garment wise compared to what you make, sewing does save you money because probably only the last two would be as high quality as what I made. And they're at least double, if not triple or even quadruple the price that I paid to make it myself. Uh, so just, just more food for thought, always trying to make you think more about your clothes and what's in your wardrobe. Now we can talk about the dress itself. Here she is. She's so cute. What's in my pocket? Oh boy. What am I about to pull out? <laughs> uh, in uh, what's in my dress pocket winner today is empty bag that used to hold corn tortillas. So clearly I wore this and got a lot of use. I shoved this back in my pocket because my work doesn't have a plastic film recycle bin. So I was bringing it home to bring it to the grocery store to recycle, but that's just really, really funny. As you can see, the pockets were quite effective for me. I will say now that I've gotten more in the habit of putting pockets in things, I'm kind of bummed out when they don't have them. Specifically for me at work, I have to have a badge on me and wearing like the dress I didn't put pockets in because I was a rookie but because of that I don't have my badge on me half the time and it caused me all sorts of problems anyway back to this dress I think it's so cute it makes me really happy I can tell you right now I'm going to be making this pattern again and again I actually like the pleats which I am not always a huge fan of how pleats look on me but I think this actually looks really really cute on me the hem length I think I got just right I tried one of you commented down below on my last video around collars where I was getting like a lot of pleating here that you actually based it down before machine basting it. So I hand basted this and I'm pretty sure that I'm doing a double check. I'm pretty sure I have not a single pleat on this. Okay, I lied, I have one pleat. But it is certainly better than it has been. So that definitely worked. I will say, I don't know if you can see from there, um, but the zipper is about a half inch taller on one side than the other. Do they, I guess it's about, a quarter inch taller at the bottom. I mean, this kind of is what happens with my loosey goosey zipper practice. I could probably get it better, but I just, certain things don't bother me. So I absolutely adore my new labels here. It's so cute. And I love how tiny and not annoying it is. I'm pretty pleased actually with my ease in of the sleeves as well. It's pretty minimal in its tucks. I liked using kind of some yellow buttons just because I feel like it's so rare I make a garment with yellow in it. It's fun to have a garment that I pull more of the yellow out than any other color. But yeah, I like I said, I'm gonna definitely remake this dress and other fabrics for sure because I also like, you can kind of super cinch your waist with this tie, but if you need it a little looser after consuming some food or if you're bloating or just 
if your body's doing what your body does because bodies change throughout the day you can retie it and readjust kind of how tight it is so i love that it gives you like that snatched effect but you can adjust that snatched effect throughout the day as your body shifts and changes this is a 10 out of 10 pattern for me i love it my experiment with like how would this look with a peter pan collar or you could also probably figure out how to do this with more of like a scoop neck and not a button up so i definitely think specifically these ties are something I can add to any other pattern pretty easily. So it's something I'm gonna kind of have in the back of my mind for my bag of tricks for when I'm making other garments. But yeah, I think pretty much we are summed up. So I hope you enjoyed this make. I hope it made you feel springy, summery warm i know in other parts of the country it is warm here in seattle it's still fairly chilly like right now it's uh, it looks like it's maybe getting a little sunny outside sunny but yeah i'm i'm fully ready for like 60 degrees and walking around outside without a raincoat and without getting hit by killer wind that's for sure where i'm at but thanks for watching i hope to see you next time definitely if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and comment down below and then if you are financially able you can support my channel with a monthly membership over on both ko-fi and patreon i have both links down below please do not support me financially unless you are in a good place yourself to do so i am okay financially I just always appreciate the extra support on my channel because I do spend so much time and money and effort and love getting these videos to you guys every week since I do post every week be sure to subscribe down below to get my next video I believe you are going to see my fabric haul from New York and trust me it's stunning and you don't want to mix it miss it I will see you next week at 8 a.m pacific time bye